Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about some 2022 romance releases. So, I know it's already into 2022, but I was not able to film and post this in 2021, okay? Um, so some of these may or, may or may not have already been released. I don't know when this video is going to be posted, um, but yeah. These are books that I am very much looking forward to in 2022. There's only 13 books on this list, and um, that is because I primarily read indie authors and they don't tell you about releases probably until like a couple months, if not a month before uh, it's being released. <laughs> so let's dive right on into these books. I'm gonna go in chronological or numerical order, um, like from newest release to later releases. <laughs> okay, so the first book on this list is Electric Idol by Katie Robert. This book comes out on January 18th, and this is the second book to Neon Gods. And so I'm really looking forward to this. This is, I think, a retelling of um, Psyche and Eros. I love any mythological retelling, so like uh, Greek and Roman mythology. I was obsessed with Percy Jackson when I was in middle school. I still kind of am obsessed with Percy Jackson. And since I read Percy Jackson, I got into mythology heavily in middle school. And so I really love any kind of mythological retelling. And so um, I'm looking forward to this. I haven't read any retelling surrounding these characters. So I'm looking forward to it. Next, we have the next Colleen Hoover release, which comes out also on January 18th, which is called uh, Reminders of Him. I don't know anything about this book. I don't want to know anything about this book. Um, I'm going into her books. I was going to her books completely blind. She wrecks me, honestly, she does. Um, <laughs> if you read Colleen Hoover, Colleen Hoover will wreck you, obviously. I haven't read her newer stuff yet because some of them don't really appeal to me or I just haven't gotten to them yet because I have to get in the mood to read Colleen Hoover. Like I have to make sure I'm mentally stable before I read a Colleen Hoover book or I will, uh, my mental health will not be good. <laughs> Um, if my mental health is not already good and then I read a Colleen Hoover, it'll get even worse. And so I have to make sure I'm happy when I read a Colleen Hoover book. I'm about to start Ugly Love soon, so um, I need to read more of her books, but I haven't read really any of her newer releases, so we'll see when I get to this one. But I am always excited for a new Colleen Hoover release. Then on January 25th, we have Monroe by Cressley Cole. <laughs> I'm so ready for this. This is book number 18 in the Mort Immortals After Dark series, the newest release. If you don't know me, if you haven't been following my channel for a little bit, I became obsessed with the Immortals After Dark series last year and the year before that. Essentially during quarantine, during all of quarantine or isolation, whatever, I got into the Immortals After Dark series and I binged them. I binged them. They are paranormal romance books and you have met Monroe in some of the previous books and so I can't wait to read his romance. And I don't want to read the summary for this one because it could spoil the other books um because this is book number 18 and so yeah just know that this is one of the most anticipated releases of the entire year and I will be definitely waiting for this. I hope the audiobook comes out at the same time as like the ebook or physical release of it because the narrator for these books is amazing. He is awesome. Then also on January 25th, I have Running Wild by K.A. Tucker. This is um, the next book in the Simple Wild series. I think this is following a whole new couple. Um, so I'm gonna read the summary for this one. A veterinarian Murray Lur knows unrequited love all too well after pining for her best friend only to watch him marry another woman. It's a mistake she will never make again, especially not when she can practically hear the clock ticking on her childbearing years. The trouble is she can't seem to find anyone who appeals to her even a fraction as much as that early bush pilot did. Competitive musher Tyler Brady certainly didn't, especially not after the heated altercation with the handsome but arrogant spiteful man. Or so she thinks. <laughs> While volunteering at the Itarod, I think that's how you pronounce that, I'm not sure, a sled dog race, Marie discovers that first impressions may have been false and her attraction to Tyler is very real, but her heart belongs to someone else, leaving him with nothing to offer but friendship. Marie has been down that road before and knows how it ends. Yet, no matter how hard she works to keep from falling for Tyler, it seems she's doomed to follow her own trail once again. So I really loved The Simple Wild when it came out. I did, I didn't really like book two, wasn't really my thing. Um, and I haven't read the novella that takes place after book two yet, I need to. Um, but book three seems really good. Like it seems right up my alley, like something I would love. I do know these books aren't really on the spice scale all that much, but I really adored 
the romance of book one so i hope that this one will live up to book one. Ooh, next we have one of my other most anticipated releases of the entire year we have dark fire by ruby dixon um and this comes out on january 30th and this is the last book in the fire blood dragon series if you didn't know this is an alien romance series and a dragon shifter series where one day on earth a portal or a rift opened up in the sky and dragons started flying out and decimating the entire world. It's post-apocalyptic now, it's kind of like a dystopian world and there are only a few human survivors here and there in certain camps and um, humans are starting to realize that dragons can shift into actual people and that they have mates and when they find their, when they sense their mates they're able to shift into their human form. Book number 10 is about Azar and Melina who you've seen in previous books. Now Azar is the villain of this series and so uh we'll see what this book will be like i've never read a villain origin story or a villain story in general by ruby dixon she's always like the sweet caring will love you for forever like sweet cinnamon roll heroes like that's what she writes and so i'm very interested to read about a villain character from her because azar has definitely been a villain and i'm very interested to read about melina in this situation too because you read about her like kind of like caring for Azar but also hating her hating him because of the horrible things that he has done and so I'm very interested to see her like viewpoint of all of this but it seems like they're mates <laughs> and so I am obviously looking forward to this one I am counting down the days till this book and I'm gonna be really sad when it's over because that's another Ruby Dixon series finished and so I'm like what is she gonna do now she finished IPB Ice Home is gonna be done soon the Fireblood Dragon series is done I think Rizdiverse is done too and the Corsair series is done I'm like what more is she gonna write? <laughs> of course, I have to put House of Sky and Breath on here by Sergi Mass. This comes out February 15th. This is the second book to in the Crescent City series. So the second book to House of Earth and Blood. I of course read that immediately when it came out and adored it. I'm not ashamed to say that I love Sarah J Mass's writing. I find it highly addictive and it really got me into the fantasy romance genre and I'm very grateful for her because of that because that is one of my favorite romance genres of all time now. This is a fantasy romance series. I'm hoping that book two gets some spice in it or some steam in it because book one was heavily lacking and I feel like that's the only thing that was lacking of book one was the steam and so I need it in book two. <laughs> Next is an interesting one. I think this is my only YA release on this list. It's One for All by Lily Lanoff. This comes out on March 8th. And I put this on this list specifically because this heroine has my chronic illness in it. Okay, so this heroine has pots and I think she's like a warrior too. So we're gonna read this summary for you. Okay. This is an own voices gender bent retelling of the three musketeers in which a girl with a chronic illness trains as a musketeer and uncovers secrets, sisterhood, and self-love. Tiana de Bats is most herself with a sword in her hand. Everyone in town thinks her near constant dizziness makes her weak. Nothing but a sick girl. Even her mother is desperate to marry her off for security. But Tiana wants to be strong, independent, and a fencer like her father, a former musketeer and her greatest champion. Then Papa is brutally mysteriously murdered. His dying wish for Tiana to attend finishing school, but I cannot pronounce that word. That's a French word. La Académie, Académie des Marais. Oh my gosh, I'm butchering that. Don't, don't copy me. Oh my gosh, okay. Tiana realizes is no finishing school. It's a secret training ground for a new kind of musketeer. Women who are socialites on the surface, but strap daggers under their skirts, seduce men into giving up dangerous secrets and protect France from downfall. And they won't shy away from a sword fight. With her newfound sisterhood by her side, Tiana feels for the first time like she has purpose, like she belongs. But then she meets Etienne, her first target in uncovering a potential assassination plot. He's kind, charming, and breathlessly attractive. And he might have information about what really happened to her father. Torn between duty and a dizzying emotion, Tiana will have to lean on her friends, listen to her own body, and decide where her loyalties lie or risk losing everything she's ever wanted. This debut novel is a fierce whirlwind adventure about the depths of found family, the strength that goes beyond the body, and the determination it takes to fight for what you love. That sounds so stinking good. That has potential to be one of my new favorite books of all time. I do follow the author on Instagram. I think one of y'all, like one of my viewers, I don't remember who one of my friends sent me this book on Instagram and told me about um, the representation in here because the author has my chronic illness and she put it into this book and I am so incredibly excited for it. I am dying to read it. Next I of course have um, The Dragon's Bride by Katie Robert. Um, this is her monster romance book that I'm so excited for. It comes out on March 29th. 
I'm counting down the days. It looks so good. All I know is that it's a heroine, a human woman who's chained to this uh, monster dragon creature. <laughs> and I'm excited. I've seen some fan art for it. It looks so good. The cover just has me. It has me, it has me, and I want it. Of course, I have the next book in the um, Black Tiger Brotherhood series, book number 20, Lover Arisen. I'm almost completely caught up with the series. I think I have one or two more books to read. Um, and so whenever this book comes out on April 5th, I will be already caught up with the series. This is the romance uh, starring Balthazar, who you've read about in previous books. And he has some um, trouble going on with him based on the past books that we've read. Some things have happened to him. So I'm looking forward to this. This is a vampire romance series, if you didn't know, so check it out if you haven't heard about it. Then on May 17th, we have Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. Now, I'm always gonna put Christina Lauren's books in my most anticipated of the year. Will I read them? I have no idea. I haven't read any of their newest, newer releases after The Unhoneymooners because I think I heard um, not so great things about Twice in a Blue Moon and then all the books after that have been like mediocre to a lot of people. Um, let me know if any of their newer stuff appeals to you. I just really prefer their older stuff. I just do. Like the Under Un Honeymooners was great as five stars from me, but it's not as good as some of their old stuff. Like I absolutely adore Josh and Hazel's, Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. I honestly love the Beautiful Bastard series. I do. And like, they're not making books like that anymore. Like those books are hot and fun and they're not making them anymore and I'm sad. So I don't know what this book is about. I don't know if I will know what this book is about, but it is, I am, I am somewhat anticipating it. Another release I'm very much looking forward to comes out on July 12th. This is called A Curse of Blood and Stone by K.A. Tucker, another K.A. Tucker on this list. This is the second book in the Fate and Flame series. And so the first book was A Fate of Wrath and Flame. Um, and I buddy read that with my lovely friend Tori from Novel Life. Um, so I'm hoping that we can buddy read this book together when it releases because buddy reading that book with her was honestly one of the best buddy reading experiences I've ever had in my entire life because that book has some plot twists and some twists and turns. And like, if you want to read A Fate of Wrath and Flame, buddy read it with somebody, do it because it is awesome. <laughs> so Fate of Wrath and Flame, it's a fantasy romance book where our heroine um, is a thief and she gets kind of like sucked into this fantasy land into her doppelganger body. That's a princess and that is kidnapped by these, or not kidnapped, but is imprisoned by these people in this fantasy land. And so it's just, it's wild ride. It's so much fun. And I'm, we're hoping, Tori and I were talking about, and we were hoping that this book gets into the um, more romance heavy stuff because there's romance in book one, but we wanted to get deeper and hotter, obviously, in book two. Um, then we have a book by Talia Hibbert, obviously. Um, it's untitled. It just says that it's the first book in the Sky Briar series, and it's being released sometime in 2022 by Avon. I don't know what it is, but of course I have to put any Talia Hibbert book that I know of on this list. Oh, I also have another YA book, the last book on this list. It comes out sometime in 2022. There's no definitive date to it, but the title is Escaping Mr. Rochester by L.L. McKinney, and this is on this list because anytime I see a Jane Eyre retelling, I have to put it on the list because um, if you don't know, Jane Eyre is one of my favorite books of all time and I'm obsessed with it. So the, obviously the title, Escaping Mr. Rochester, immediately took me in. Um, there's a short little blurb here. It says this is a YA reimagining of Charlotte Bronte's classic novel that asks, what if the real villain of Jane Eyre was actually Mr. Rochester? In this queer romance, Jane Eyre and Bertha Mason, Mr. Rochester's wife, whom he imprisoned within the house for years, must save each other from the horrifying machinations of Mr. Rochester. So that drew me in, of course. So I'm not really reading YA anymore, but when I read a synopsis of a YA book that grips me, I need to read it. That sounds amazing. A romance where Jane and Bertha get together? <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see it. It's, I might be a little distressed reading about Mr. Rochester being a villain because I've always romanticized Mr. Rochester. So maybe I can love him as a villain too. We'll see. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are all of the books that I'm anticipating reading in 2022 that have been announced. Um, there's probably going to be more releases happening throughout the year that I just don't know about yet, obviously, and that the general public doesn't know about because the authors haven't released them yet. Um, and I mostly read indie books, so um, we don't get those uh, release dates for a little bit up until the book is released. Um, sometimes there are even authors that'll just drop it like Ruby Dixon does. Ruby Dixon will just be like, happy birthday, here's here's a book for you. Like that's what she does. <laughs> like no warning whatsoever, she'll just drop it. And I love her for that. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me a yellow heart emoji. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.